Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to do a slab calculation for the reconstruction of silicon 100 surface. If you remember that this is the crystal structure of silicon, and, um, and it is basically a two FCC lattice shifted by one fourth of the crystal cell. And uh, for this kind of a uh, cubic lattice, you have 100 plane, we have 110 plane, and 111 plane, as shown here. And what what we are interested in today is the 100 plane. Uh, because of symmetry, you uh, the 110 plane, you can you can also uh, also use the uh, plane that faces upwards, uh, which is equivalent as 100 here. And um, and basically, what we did before was the calculation was the bulk calculation. Now today we want to cut the crystal uh, here in this one O plane. And what what we will notice is that usually in the in the bulk, every every silicon atom uh, forms four bonds, but on the surface, if we cut here. The, uh, it will only form two bonds to the, to the lower uh, um, atomic layer, but uh, but upper two bonds are are gone. So so there will be two so-called dangling bonds or unpaired um, chemical bonds per surface uh, silicon atom. Yeah? and this is this is energetically not preferred. Uh, and so, so the surface will undergo some reconstruction that it forms some uh, superstructure to eliminate those bonds. So to motiv motivate th in this a little bit, I will show you one experimental uh, result. Uh, so this is the uh, silicon 100 surface imaged by scanning tunneling microscopy. If you uh, like scanning tunneling microscopy is is one of the techniques to image the atoms on the surface. So what you see here is very nice uh, atomic layers. So those belong to different atomic layers. And uh, what I mean by atomic layers is that, the, for example, those five atoms are one layer, those two the second layer, those four third layer, those two fourth layer, and those five fifth layer so for one unit cell there are uh, those layer uh, atomic layers so so there's uh, one layer two layer three layer four layer and uh, if we zoom in we can see actually the re surface reconstructions we see a lot of uh, like despite there are a lot of defects we see mainly those uh, parallel lines and those parallel lines are the uh, uh, surface dimer reconstruction so Actually, those lines are uh, a sequence of uh, silicon dimers on the surface. And if we, we go to one atomic layer below, and you see that the direction is uh, 90 degrees perpendicular. Yes. And in, in today's uh, video, I will show you how to calculate the atomic structure of those uh, uh, reconstructions. OK, so let's get started. Okay, so this is the input file. Um, as usual, this is just the input file for pw.x and calculation x relaxation. And uh, notice that here the calculation is a little bit more difficult, so I cannot do it on my computer. I, I, I actually did it on a, on a cluster. So, uh, so the pseudo directory and the output directory is a little bit different, but I guess in your case, you you need to change it to your use anyhow. So, uh, but but the uh, super potential uh, library I keep the same as before SSSP precision, and uh, this is the maximum number of steps for the for the relaxation calculation because this time I know that I need more steps than the default fifty steps. Yeah, because we have a lot of atoms. And those are the uh, conversion threshold. I lower the conversion threshold from default because I want to get a more precise structure. And this I graph equals eight. It is a uh, orthorhombic uh, lattice, which means that the uh, x y z um, crystal uh, crystal vector are ninety degrees uh, perpendicular. However, the lattice constant in in three directions are different. So this is the uh, that is uh, that is constant for the first uh, for, for the x uh, direction that is 29.2 bore 
and then the the second and the third so basically the y and z component uh, are expressed uh, uh, with respect to the uh, to uh, to this one so basically the the y lattice constant is is 0 0.5 times this 29 bore and the third uh, then the the z lattice constant is 1.5 times the, uh, 29 bore yeah and and we have 56 uh, atoms and two types of atoms because we we use uh, hydrogen atoms to passivate the uh, lower surface and um, and you need this smearing term because uh, because the like the surface during calculation could be uh, could become metallic and once it is metallic if you don't have the uh, smearing term it will it cannot converge so it's better that you have this smearing term here and uh, no symmetry e equals true um, so so, so we uh, specify that uh, explicitly that there is no symmetry uh, in this system because uh, because this is a large system if uh, if quantum espresso detects some kind of symmetry in this system it it will try to keep the symmetry in the relaxation that is not what we want because the reconstruction actually breaks symmetry okay so we explicitly tell quantum stress so there's no symmetry okay and 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 here it's more or less the same uh, as before and i i actually make the convergence threshold larger than what we used before because this is the convergence threshold of the whole system and this is a system contains a lot of atoms so the total energy is much larger yeah so you don't need such a precise uh, convergence threshold okay so everything here is same is the same as before and then those are the uh, atomic positions i think it's it's better that i can uh, explain this uh, using x crystal because then you can see what i actually construct here yeah and the last thing here is that uh, is that I set the k points to be two, four, one. Uh, a rule rule of thumb is that uh, the the number of k points in one direction multiplied by the by the crystal constant in that direction should be a should be more or less constant. So, for example, here it means that the uh, y lattice, lattice constant is half the x lattice constant. So in the k points, we should do the other way around. The x, uh, the kx should be uh, half the ky. So that's what what we put here. That should uh, that can also be applied to the z direction. And in this case, since we are calculating a surface, uh, we just set it to be one. Yeah. So so this is something that you also also notice, and that if we calculate a small system like we did before. Uh, we need uh, we need a lot of k points. We need, for example, eight, eight, eight. Yeah, but but here, if if your supercell is large, you need uh, the larger your supercell is, the less k points you you need. Yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, you keep the the multiplication of k points and the uh, and size of the supercell to be more or less constant. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's it. I can show you uh, in X Kristen. So X Kristen and uh, PWSCF input file, and here. Okay. So, so there are two things. One is that it is drawn on uh, on the upper side of the box. You can click here. Okay, and the second thing is that the silicon silicon bond is not uh, is not displayed uh, normally. So you modify atomic radius. You can change uh, and go to fourteen silicon and change to, uh, for example, one point four. Yeah. Okay, and then we see those nice uh, silicon silicon bonds. And uh, what we will see is that first thing is that we have a large vacuum here. That is because um, actually the let's say we crank up the number of supercells uh, displayed. Actually, this is what what is calculated because because of the periodic boundary condition. Uh, basically, we calculate uh, a lot of slabs, 
and so, so that's why it's important that you leave some uh, leave enough vacuum space to separate those slabs otherwise they will see each other and interact which with, with each other that uh, that we don't want okay and then let's uh, go back for for this kind of uh, silicon or semiconductor or ionic crystal calculation you need a lot of uh, atomic layers for example here we have like one two three four five five silicon layers and uh, yeah but for metal calculation you can have uh, have smaller layers because uh, because the uh, electrons can screen uh, can screen the uh, the influence of uh, of the upper and lower surface quite well yeah okay so so in this case we have five silicon layers and we also have uh, hydrogen atoms to passivate the uh, the lower slab uh, the lower silicon uh, surface and the hydrogen atoms uh, turns out to be very important if you want to calculate the energy perhaps it will it will not change the structure but if you want to compare different energy you have to do this uh, add these hydrogen atoms and what you can see here is that I keep the hydrogen atoms uh, real, uh, fixed and also the first layer of silicon fixed and second layer of silicon fixed so I keep the hydrogen atoms fixed and first first layer and second layer silicon fixed it's also important to keep the lower two uh, layers um, of, of bulk material to be fixed otherwise uh, the, the structure would collapse and I let the, the surface three layers uh, to, to relax freely this is also um, also important uh, because because not only the, fir the first layer but also the second and third layer will, uh, will relax okay so this actually is is more or less the minimum uh, configuration for this uh, silicon uh, surface and reconstruction calculation and if you if you have more like computational power you can also increase the uh, atomic layers yeah and that will make the uh, result more precise <clears throat> and also one thing to notice is that um, is that we we use like like here if you if you see that the uh, x and y direction is actually not the 100 and 010 direction uh, if you are familiar with uh, with this kind of crystal um, actually the X and Y direction are 110 direction yeah if we rotate it uh, by 45 degree you will see this uh, like familiar uh, FCC lattice yeah. so actually actually now we are facing 110 direction the reason is that uh, the reconstruction forms uh, dimer rows along 110 direction and this will make the uh, make the calculation easier yeah okay yes and then we we close it and uh, I or I've already done this calculation on uh, I think on 12 processors and this takes four hours so so this is um, this may be uh, kind of difficult to do and um, I just plot the output file PWSCF output file and here yeah uh, and choose all coordinates as animation so we can see how the system is relaxed and you see that uh, X Kristen does not uh, does not remember what we did before so so we need to change it again atomic radius and change to for example 1.4 just just for the display it will not change anything else and um, if you are like if you want to change the default uh, atomic radius you you can google how to do it and then you don't have to do do it like me every time again okay so we zoom in here so this is a structure this is the initial structure because this is the first uh, step and then the last step is 64 and what you can do is that you can click click here play forward 
and it will start the start the reconstruction process. You see that it forms dimer dimer rows, and then it tilt um, it tilts. Actually, okay. So this is the final final structure here, and um, and there are two things that are uh, important. One thing is that it forms actually dimers. So um, it, as you may remember what I just said, uh, for each uh, surface silicon atom, it has two dang dangling bonds, but since now it forms dimers, it reduces one dangling bond per atom. Uh, so, so, so that saves energy. So this is the first step. The second step, as you, as you all, all, all already see, that it, til it tilts uh, to, uh, to one direction. So it's, uh, it's not par the dimer is not parallel to the 100 uh, surface, but it is tilted, or we say buckled. And, and this is because uh, even after the formation of the dimer, it is still uh, it is. It still has one dangling bond per atom, and those unpaired act, uh, electrons are not preferred energetically. So, so by by tilting, uh, the the one unpaired electron can actually be transferred to uh, to uh, to its counterparts, uh, and and form two elect electrons here. And then there will not be any unpaired bonds, and the surface is semiconducting rather than metallic. Okay, and uh, and the third thing is that uh, uh, you can see that it forms dimer rows along along the one one zero direction, and uh, but for each dimer it has two possibilities. One is the, it is tilted to the right or it is tilted to the left, and and depending on that you have a lot of uh, possibilities. For example, everything is tilted to the right, everything is tilted to the left or it is like this it is right left right left and to the and in the next array is left right left right yeah um it turns out that this is the is energetically most preferred yeah this uh, this right left right left left and then left right left right but to to do that uh, you, you actually need to 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 let's say calculate all of uh, the, the energy of all of all possible combinations and compare the energy, which is very tedious work. Uh, yes, okay. Maybe I can also show you uh, if we just if we just uh, crank up the number of uh, number number of cells, uh, maybe even more. Oh, sorry, it's not this one. Okay, and then we will see better. So this this is what the surface look like. Yeah. So those are the bulk silicon, and those uh, are the uh, silicon one oh surface. And you see nicely that uh, that there there are dimer rows and the gap, and dimer rows and gap, and it is tilted in uh, in this left and right left right uh, manner. Okay. So uh, so in this video, I've shown you how to how to calculate a uh, surface uh, reconstruction using quantum espresso and basically I, I, I have introduced you how to uh, do a slab calculation and actually this is uh, this explains the experimental result quite well okay I hope you learned something from my video I appreciate your like or subscribe to my channel and I wish to see you next time